Did you were saying saying something. I, I was. Uh, you were talking about your mom, and I was just curious. Like, you, do you feel like your mom, because she was in a different era, mm. carried herself maybe differently than most modern women do today? And I'm not. Mm. I don't want to use that term in a loaded yeah. fashion, but like, yeah. like, where's that give and take? If we're saying men are built the same, like, but yeah. are women built? You know, carrying themselves differently. Yeah. So no, then, I get it. okay. My so mom, it would be, is it unreasonable then to expect men mm -hmm. to act in a way where women aren't acting in the way that would attract a man like that? I don't know. I just think this generation of guys is just so completely different. Um, but what about but this do, generation of women? women? I think the end. Yeah, I mean, yeah, my mom was a stay at home mom that, I mean, she went to all the board meetings and. My okay. dad was a pilot and flew across the world, but um, I guess it was different. Like, I don't want to be a stay-at-home mom. Um, I don't know. I guess I have a different view on relationships because of my parents, but it's also just hard maybe because of my dating past. So you're saying you don't want what they have? No, I definitely do want, they ha want what they have, but... But you don't want to live the way they live. I think it was it was just different. Yeah. Get your last minute chats, and we're going to wrap up in about my, 10, my, 15 my minutes. My wife is a stay at home mom, homeschools mm -hmm. our kids, mm -hmm. and works part time keeping our books. Yeah. Um, it's it is different. Technology yeah. is different. Mm -hmm. Dating apps are different. But all my wife's friends are stay at home moms. Yeah. Who have side hustles and are amazing moms, teachers, educators. I just think it's so different. Like I was saying earlier, the social media aspect of things, like my dad was a pilot. They, I uncovered their box of like love letters to each mm -hmm. other. Like Sweet. it was just so different mm -hmm. then. Like, but I think, I think it is possible today. I think it's hard. Mm -hmm. I do yeah. think it's hard. I think there's a lot of people that are, you know, because of social media, because of the sexual revolution. Yeah. You know, I know we've talked a lot about porn, but I would say because of porn, all yeah. these things, it's a lot harder to have what yeah. you're describing, but it is possible. So mm -hmm. you guys and give me hope. That's good. <laughs> well, but, it, but, it, but we're not like just lucky. I think, yeah. I mean, we were very blessed. I think they're like, we were, I think, I don't know about yeah. your family background, but I can say like my parents are together. Like that is a privilege yeah. I have. Yeah. Um, but I will also say like, it is possible for everyone, but we just have to be that change we want to mm -hmm. see. We have to choose it. Like if we want to yeah. be that with a man who's going to be that provider, that protector, who's mm -hmm. going to be a man of honor, then our role would be to be that woman of honor who wants to cherish motherhood, you know, mm -hmm. and not prioritize careerism over it and who's preparing for a life like that. I because also it will maximize that opportunity for us. Go ahead, I also Isabella. would add that like, even though I'm 23, a lot of my friends are already in their 30s. And the biggest thing that they say is that they feel that like at this point in their lives, that feminism really did have a big impact on them. Not in the way that it is now, but mm -hmm. more so that women like we're told like, you can do whatever you want. You yeah. have your whole 20s. You have time to be able to settle down and yeah. have a family. And now like I have a friend who's 34 who like just ended a two year relationship. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I spent my entire 20s thinking that I had time. And now here I am and I don't have yeah. time but I also want to like revert back to because I was seeing comments earlier and like she has two eggs left like don't just assume that I like, mean the truth is that women are on a biological clock but genetics and the way that you take care of yourself is yeah. really crucial like to they that. shouldn't just automatically assume because I'm 35 and I, right. I don't have a husband and the white picket fence like there's like, nothing wrong with that. My best friend's 34 yeah. and she just went to a fertility clinic and she's completely fine. So my I mom really think this had you me when she was 40 and they said yeah. her yeah. ovaries look no like that saying, of a No one's year saying that you, me, I mean, I'm yeah. 34. Or actually, I'm 35. I turned 35 last month. No one is saying that any of us, because we're older, yeah. like we're doomed or anything like that. I just like think that. we have this, like, yeah. as older mm -hmm. women, I don't even want to consider myself that, but yeah. like, you just look, have this. And, and then I think, just seeing the comments, I'm like, don't well, look at, don't, don't look, look at, at the, the comments. comments. I know, I know. I, know. I think the key is. I know. I think the key is. You know, the the point or the key here is. We're this is a dating podcast. It's like, yeah. okay, yeah. what's the way to maximize dating towards yeah. your yes. goals? Exactly. You know? Yeah. And are you in Miami too? I'm in Nashville. Nashville. Okay, so you're in a major city. Yeah. So mm -hmm. just just something to consider. We're communicating selection bias on both parts. Mm -hmm. You're in Miami, you're in Nashville, you guys are in the Hollywood scene. That's very different than the way the rest of the country lives. Yeah. Right? right? So if you come to Vista, California and go to church with me and meet all my, my mm -hmm. friends and my wife's friends, and you meet a dozen stay, stay at home moms, yeah. right? You, my world is completely different. Your world's different. Yeah. Your world's different. And so uh, my advice would be 
maybe be open to meeting some different people in mm -hmm. different circles mm -hmm. as, as friends, mm -hmm. not like to date, but, yeah. and, and that'll show you mm -hmm. that like, oh no, there's actually a lot of people yeah. that, that still do hold to those values that you, that I feel you like, like we're only yeah. talking about women who want kids. Like what about the women who don't want kids? Well, I think we're talking about women who want to be with men that want to be that provider protector. And typically those women are seeking a family and wanting to have kids. Mm -hmm. and I, I think, think most women want to have kids, yeah. Mm -hmm. Most. Yeah. Probably like, what, like 90% yeah, or something? Yeah, 85% of yeah. women will have kids. I remember well, having a conversation with my dad when I was like 18, where I, when I was graduating high school, where I asked him, what did you want to do when you were finishing high school or, or, or actually finishing college? And I remember him just telling me, well, I wanted to marry your mom and I wanted to build a family with mm -hmm. her. And I remember just being like a young punk ass kid that had all these like dreams of entrepreneurship and creativity and stuff and just being kind of stumped and just <laughs> even then thinking like, this is the generation gap that my parents to them to just have a nice American dream life was the goal. Mm -hmm. And I think that to a lot of like young dudes, especially now and probably women too, it's like you want to like build something and make something out of yourself before you want to settle down because you pretty much accurately know that once you become Steve Jobs that you're going to have, you know, your pick of all the different women out there. And that mentality is, I guess in some ways it makes sense and that like if you remain single, maybe you're going to be able to work harder on your hopes and dreams. But I also think that it's kind of a pipe dream. And for the average sure. person, especially given how high the cost of living is, especially in major cities, yep. it's like realistically probably the best thing that you could do is like fall in love, get into a relationship with a girl, get married, mm -hmm. split your expenses, have a family, et cetera, once you feel comfortable financially. But like, you know, we, we mm -hmm. just live in a society where we're constantly surrounded by people who are putting on examples of doing the other thing, which is mm -hmm. basically like mindlessly chasing ass and, yep. you know, mm -hmm. highs and money or whatever for your whole life. And that is kind of like a weird thing that the manosphere has to sort of reckon with, which is that, you know, I, I think, you know, somebody like Andrew Tate being like the, at the forefront of the Manosphere now, mm -hmm. it's like you can't really necessarily just be pushing an agenda of like, yo, as many girls right. as possible because mm -hmm. Andrew Tate is out here saying like, no, that is yeah. not going to make you happy yeah. in the long run. And anyone who's really being honest with you is going to let you yeah. know that's not going to make you happy in the long run. To me, the, it's a nuanced question of like, how long do you need to be single? Like, what is the ideal number of people that you should probably be well, thinking you might want to have with before you get into a long-term relationship? Yeah. I would just, you, that was very profound. Mm -hmm. And I think what we're saying is, statistically speaking, the majority of men and women will have kids. Mm -hmm. What is the optimal way to build a family? Mm -hmm. If we're talking about dating, we're talking about relationships, what's the optimal way to cause the most amount of flourishing to the most amount of people? And what has worked mm -hmm. through and through, through all these civilizations? I think that's the crux of what we're getting on. So what you're saying is totally spot on. And it's not red pill, blue pill to me. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of goofy things from both sides, a lot of nonsense being pushed. But if we're talking about the optimal flourishing environments, because we're all gonna eventually have kids, majority of us anyway, mm -hmm. how does that look um if you're a guy i mean i think it's probably you know you spend however many years being single and sort of figuring out what you like and what you don't like and then at some point once you get into the relationship you just take it serious i think once as a guy in my life when i decided that i wanted to actually treat a girl good it wasn't really that hard for me to then end up in a relationship with her, you know, whereas when I was trying to do the thing of like trying to be this playboy or trying to like be getting drunk and fucked up and just kind of treating women like pieces of shit, then that was like, it's very hard for you to land in a relationship when you're not showing the girl respect. But if you, as soon as you flip the switch and start like actually treating her like you give a shit about what happens to her or how you're treating her, usually it's, That's right. it's not that complicated. That's right. Well, you yeah. know, it's like too powerful too is we can learn from other people's experiences. Because I do think, like, you sharing your experience, Adam, like, other people sharing their experience, like, hey, this is how I lived, and it didn't make me happy, and so then I wanted to, you know, get married, or whatever it is, I do think that people don't have to sow their wild oats. Like, I think that is a mythology in our culture today of, like, oh, when you're young, you're promiscuous, and then you settle down. I know so many couples who were young, and they were each other's first, and they settled down, and they have this beautiful life that they built together. Now, that's not everybody's story, obviously, mm -hmm. but I think that we need to kind of make that normal again, because mm -hmm. right now, if you're a virgin, and you know you get married, you know, I got married at 30, and I was a virgin, and people were like, no one was like, oh, you're so crazy, you're so weird, like, how could that be? And it's like, why don't we normalize that, mm -hmm. instead of saying it's weird? I mean, literally, people get made fun of for being virgins, especially right. men actually, which is so sad. It's true. And it should be the it's opposite. True. It should be like, no, let's celebrate that, not to shame people who aren't, but let's celebrate living that 
people say it's traditional, but living that that way because it leads to and has led to so many beautiful marriages like the, your parents and you know my parents and other people who have those role models.